This video is for a premillennium brass La Pavone espresso machine. Uh, the purpose of this video is just to show you the machine functioning. Um, all the details on its condition I will save for um, the photos. So I'm going to let this heat up and get a little bit closer to our operating temperature and I'll go over some of the aspects of this machine, some things that I've worked on and cleaned and um, yeah, like I said, just to give you an overall sense of how clean and how up to date this machine is, how well maintenance it was. Um, this machine is from 1996, I'm not sure if I've said that. All the La Pavonis for the most part have a sticker underneath uh, the, the base here that have has the manufacture date on it. This one's 1996. And for a machine that's nearly 20 years old, it's in really, really good shape. Uh, a lot of them will tend to have these sort of hairline scratches from people using more abrasive cleaning cloths than they should on these machines. This one really doesn't have it, except for maybe a little bit right here. But um, I've seen much newer machines have far more of those hairline scratches than this. The brass and copper um, brass boiler is in pretty good shape. Um, again, for 20 years old, that's as good as you're going to get. The steam that comes out of this wand affects the patina of the metal quite a bit. So just from regular use, that's as good as this is really going to look. Um, and they may, there may be nicer ones out there from this age, but uh, I haven't seen them. It's just uh, the environment of what this machine is doing and what effects it has on the boiler itself. Um, when I received this machine, I stripped it all the way down. I took off the head. I changed the gasket back here. Um, took off the piston and serviced the gaskets here. They're the original, well not original, but they're the same gaskets that were there, but they had really, really good resistance in the group head and they didn't need to be changed. So I just um, you know, took a look at them and then re-oiled them to make sure that they last uh, a long time. And took off um, the overpressure and the steam wand and gave pretty much every part on here a really, really good descaling bath and a cafiza bath that really intense um, Espresso, espresso machine cleaning. And we rinsed it, we did the Cafiza, or I'm sorry, the descale twice and the Cafiza once, rinsed it all up really well and reassembled the machine and it's working perfectly. It works, you know, these La Pavone machines really never die, they're, they're always working, they do a very good job. Um, think what else. That's about it. All the other gaskets are in pretty good shape. There's one back here on the steam wand that will is starting to go. There's some cracks in it. It probably has um, four, five, six months left in it depending on how often you use it. And I'm generally the sort of person that likes to get my full mileage out of something. So I'm going to leave it for now. Um, but be aware of that. There's a little le leak going on back there, but it's pretty minor. Um, I'll try and keep a count if the video doesn't pick up how many drips come from it. But like I said, it's pretty minor. Uh, I think that's it. So I'll let this continue to heat up. And um, if anything comes to mind, I will be sure to chime back in. See, there's a little leak from the steam wand. But uh, like most of these machines, the leak occurs early and then goes away as the machine heats up and the metals expand. I'm not sure that brand new ones would do that, but it's something I noticed with these H machines. If this is your first La Pavone and it is a two switch system, you leave it on two until it fully heats up and the uh, overpressure makes that, um, or the steam valve releases and creates the, that high level of steam pressure you saw earlier. Uh, you let that go for about six seconds and then you switch it to one and it's just the, um, then it's just enough power to maintain the temperature in the, um, in the boiler.
Also, if this is your first machine, raise the lever pretty much as slow as you can, otherwise the suction that is created will have a tendency to pull the grounds up, which will very, very much have an effect on your shot. Let it sit here for about 10 to 12 seconds, and um, depending on how well you did as a grind and a tamp pressure, which I didn't do so well, generally you'll get a slight drip and that's kind of your indicator to go. And then after that 10-12 seconds, pull through. Don't push too hard, you don't want to stress the machine, but it's nice constant pressure so there's a slow drip rate for the espresso. That's a little light, I probably would want a bit more bean, but a little coarser ground for next time. But um, still, just gives you an idea of how easy it is to pull a nice shot with this. I'm sure I forgot to mention something, I'll put that in the listing description, um, but until further notice that'll do, and thank you for watching.